uh, September 21st, 2019. Um, we were just going to go out for a quick boat ride to see the stars and come back. And, um, you know, on the way home, you know, it was, I, I could see my house. I just couldn't wait to get on the couch and, you know, you know get my pajamas and just settle down. And, um, and then just out of nowhere. <laughs> We were in a huge pontoon boat in the no weight zone, just out of nowhere. <laughs> this boat just runs right over us. <laughs> and we were all straight in a row, Morgan, and myself, and Stan, and just, just, just runs right over, all right, right at the top of us. And um, um, killing my husband, killing my husband, and um, he, he pushed me out of the way, so my legs got uh, in, in the propeller. I lost one leg, almost lost two. And thank goodness, and Morgan, you know, apparently the seat crushed her down the floor. In fact, not that I can see any blessings out of this, but the blessing as a mother is that my daughter didn't get hurt. <laughs> we're almost home. You could basically see our house so close, less than a minute's drive, and all of a sudden, it just sounded like metal, like you were in like a, a car, something, a car being crushed, a metal car being crushed. And they didn't know if you were going to survive or not. Just, it felt like an eternity underneath that metal, that loud metal. And when I stood up, I just figured my father would be really upset because his brand new boat had been ruined. And I called out and I said, is everyone okay? And my mom said, yes, yeah, she's fine. And I looked over at my father and The guilt that comes along with not being able to save him is a lot to deal with. I'm really glad my mom's here though, so. To have to choose between your parents is really tough. I stood up and I looked at my father. He was hanging over the side of the boat, his bone was out of his shoulder all the way up to his ear. And his body was just, I, didn't, I don't know where the rest of his body was. So I went over to try to save him, but then I looked at my mom and her leg was just, I mean, you could see the bone and then muscle and just like gore. So I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? You know, I've only got like 30 seconds to save them. I've got to save both of them. I can't go here. I can't go home without my parents, right? So I've got to save both of them. This is my responsibility. So I just took my dress off immediately, just took my clothes off and tied it around my mom's leg as tight as I could. But I didn't think that was going to do anything. I didn't think that she was actually going to be saved because, I mean, her leg was destroyed. But I was like, okay, so I'm just going to do this really quick and then I'm going to go back to my father and I'm going to resuscitate him. And once I resuscitate him, then I can can deal with both of them. But I went over to him and his bone was out of his body and his side was gone. And I picked up his head I picked up his head to try to resuscitate him. And there was a little hole in his cheek. And I thought, I'll plug that and I'll just resuscitate him, he'll be fine. Once we get him to the doctor, he'll be fine. But I couldn't find his feet, you know, I couldn't find his legs. I didn't know where he was and I didn't want to pull him down and snap his neck and it'd be my fault that he was completely dead. If his, if his neck was snapped, he'd, he definitely would be dead. So I just, I held his neck so it wouldn't be obstructed. And I wrapped him up and I tried to hold his guts into his body. <laughs> you don't ever think that something like this could happen to you. I've been on the water my whole life. Never would have thought something like this would have happened. My father's been boating his whole life. We have almost every boat you can imagine. I mean, there a lot of them are junkers, but just never in a million years, especially so close to home. You know, I could we could see the house so close to so close to safety, and for it to happen there, it's just I could have swam us home, but I had to try to save him. And there's nobody on the waterway to help you. By that time of year, 
there aren't any police on the water. DNR is doing stuff with hunters and I'm not trying to throw DNR under the bus. You know, I, I think DNR is fantastic. I, I just am saying that nobody was on the waterway. And Tracy Gordon didn't come back to help us. Strangers came and helped us. And I was mad at them at first. I mean, I know no one else was done, but I didn't want to do that. You know, I don't want to. I was slipping in something that was on the ground. It looked, I thought it was my father's half of his liver because, you know, his, it looked like a shark had bitten the side of his body out. I don't want to be doing that. You know, people talk about they don't want their rights infringed on. I feel like that kind of infringed on my right, infringed on my father's right to live, it infringed on my mother, her leg, like she's injured, but this is permanent. This is a, when she's 90 years old, think about that. You know, you worry about older people falling. What about with a prosthetic leg? You put someone in a wheelchair, and well, I don't want to go there, but. Do I feel justice will be done in this case? Well, I want to believe that justice will be done in this case. Justice can't really be done in this case, but I want to believe that the legal system will give my parents justice for what happened, but I mean, I haven't seen it yet. They just keep pushing it back and and you just have to keep reliving it over and over. You can't ever get to a point where it's like closure because you're sitting here waiting for justice all the time, wondering if it's gonna happen. And he hired a hotshot lawyer right off the bat, you know? So. So, you know, we started a Facebook group within three months of the crash and we got a lot of support and we went down to the state house and the bill right now it's s497 that means it originated in the senate and it passed through the senate last year unanimously now it's in the house of representatives and it has to go through committee or subcommittee and then committee and then it has to be on the floor so everybody can hear about it so everybody gets a, a, a vote in it you know everybody that's being representative south represented in south carolina gets a vote a hearing okay so right now it's in the house of representatives it's awaiting a hearing that's going to be a little bit difficult this year because there have been some issues with the House Judiciary Committee, which is where it is. And honestly, this bill for it to be in the Judiciary Committee is kind of confusing, which is another reason why it might have hangups because it's in a committee that doesn't normally talk about this subject. I would expect it to be in like agriculture, but it's in the Judiciary Committee. I don't know. But to get it a hearing, we need more people on Save the Lake on our Facebook group, Safe the Lake, to talk about boating safety. I mean, if we right now, if we don't have the bill for boating safety, we might as well just talk about it and teach everybody. You know, you don't have to have the bill to teach people, but the bill will help, you know, because it'll, it'll force people to take this education course, which doesn't even take that long, and then you know what you're doing and you feel comfortable out on the waterways. Um, yeah, so to, to help get it fast, which would be amazing. And it's not even our bill, it's not about us. You know, my dad is gone. My mom lost her leg. Now it's about the, the people out there, everybody else, the people that we don't want to suffer. So it would be really amazing if people could contact their representatives in the House of Representatives, especially the ones in the Judiciary Committee. I could put a list of everybody's contact information on my, uh, my website, safetolake.com. I could put it on a Facebook group so it's easy. I could even make an email template where you can email them all at one time. They said that if they get six people contacting them about a bill, they think it's important. What if like 200 people contacted about the bill? You know, what if, what if we made our waterways safer and no one else had to suffer?